One is killing millions of sea stars on the Pacific coast, and what could be the effects on other fish? I'm Elaine Reyes here in Washington, D.C., and this is America's Now. First up, a mysterious disease that has been killing massive numbers of sea stars. It is essentially along the whole west coast of North America, at least temperate North America. The spatial scale is completely unprecedented. How was it? And scientists do not yet know what is causing the widespread illness. And we slowly started seeing all these stars just wasting away. And by the end of our, our project, we had some species that weren't even present at all. Correspondent Mike Kirsch dives into the waters of the California coast in search of answers. And later, a former hockey player from Argentina who is helping rebuild the poorest communities in Rosario. And our philosophy is to give these children, to give them the opportunities and the chances to unleash their talents and unleash their potential. Meet game changer Mario Raimondi. A huge economic crisis in Puerto Rico is pushing professionals off the island. I was working in a big firm in Puerto Rico and it was a great experience while we had stuff to do. But when the economy hit rock bottom, the firm didn't receive any work, any referrals. The majority leaving are the young and educated. If they're making as much money as they used to. Correspondent Nitsa Soledad Perez examines the reason behind the crisis. Welcome to the show. Imagine a population of millions of people at any given spot in the world suddenly dying with no explanation. The marine world equivalent of this is actually happening right now with the deaths of millions of sea stars along the Pacific coast of the United States from Alaska to Southern California. Marine biologists call it sea star wasting syndrome and the creatures are considered crucial predators in the ocean's food chain and ecosystem. Their widespread disappearance is so alarming, the U.S. government has provided rapid response research funding to figure out why it is happening. America's Now correspondent Mike Kirsch reports. This time last year, very few people living around Northern California's Monterey Bay and in the beachside community of Santa Cruz have the slightest idea of the trouble sweeping through the coastal waters around them. Then came some rather alarming news last October from the Clifftop Marine Science Laboratories of the University of California at Santa Cruz. Marine biologists were facing a growing crisis. We can't find one within a couple of weeks. Sea stars, or starfish like these, were mysteriously dying in massive numbers in the wild. These prominent and important members of the inner tidal community were now eerily missing along the coast. Disappearing were sea stars that historically have often been a child's first connection to the sea, or popular gift store keepsakes from the ocean found in souvenir shops around the world. Here at Natural Bridges State Beach in Santa Cruz, sea stars visitors once observed by the thousands on this rocky shoreline were nowhere to be found. They'd all but vanished, seemingly overnight, and not just in Santa Cruz. Marine scientists and research dive teams in their underwater research carried out over the last year have discovered that sea stars have been vanishing virtually everywhere else along the Pacific coast of the United States. And so the consequences of its loss might be pretty dramatic. The marine biologist leading the investigation of sea star deaths in the U.S., Dr. Pete Ramondi of UC Santa Cruz, says sea stars have been disappearing from as far north as Alaska to as far south as San Diego and the U.S.-Mexico border and all points in between, like here in the central Californian seaside town of Morro Bay, with its famous giant rock in the harbor. Sea stars here as well, almost non-existent in these waters, as if a giant bomb went off under the sea. It's a huge bomb for two reasons. It is essentially along the whole west coast of North America, at least temperate North America. The spatial scale is completely unprecedented. 
Ramondi says the second reason for concern is that sea stars play a vital role as top predators in tide pools. As odd as some may think it is to call sea stars top predators. And top predators are things that you know you might think in terrestrial systems as being mountain lions or grizzly bears, or things that have a tremendous effect on the rest of the community. In our systems, tide pool systems, we don't have mountain lions. We don't have anything big that's roaming around. What we have are sea stars. And sea stars act in the same way. They're the top gun in the system. They're the predators. They eat down the food chain. Ramondi says that means keeping other species in check. Sea stars, when they're healthy, for example, eat mussels and keep them from taking over coastlines. Same for clams. Who knew that sea stars battle with clams on a daily basis underwater? Sunflower stars like this one, they say, may have the most important role of all. They like eating sea urchins. If sea urchins were to go unchecked, they could very well decimate kelp forests, says Dr. Ramondi's UC Santa Cruz colleague, Dr. Mark Carr, whose life work has centered around kelp forest research. And, and those urchins, in turn, eat the kelp. They can, re they can go through and they can devastate a kelp forest. These sea stars may in fact play a role in controlling the urchins and allowing for that for the forest to flourish. And so the question is, if you lose these sea stars, will we see an increase in urchins and will that in turn cascade to an effect on, on the kelp forest itself? Carr says if kelp forests are wiped out, so too will be populations of larvae and insects in kelp forests that small fish feed on small fish that larger fish feed on, and so on and so on. A continued loss of sea stars could lead to an increase of sea urchins eating more of the ocean's kelp forests, which might lead to a domino effect that could have a catastrophic impact on marine life, not least of which the seafood supply for millions of seafood consumers around the world. Then you lose all the fishes and the invertebrates that are associated with, those, with the forest itself. This is one of the ones that is really being severely affected along the West Coast. Let's now get back to why and how sea stars are disappearing. Dr. Ramondi telling CCTV their rather grotesque death is referred to as sea star wasting syndrome. And the series of symptoms are typically a lesion or a sore, a wound on the animal that leads to necrosis. And necrosis is just decay of tissue. And then that decay of tissue progresses and in some species, the arms start falling off, and in some species, they actually start walking away. The bits of the arms start walking away. It's really creepy underwater to see this sort of stuff. Others, the animal just decays in place. There are even situations where you have these ghost stars where they've decayed in place, and all you see is the outline in bacteria of the animals. So alarming is the loss of sea star life. Research grants from the U.S. government were quickly approved for Dr. Ramondi and his team of researchers. It's alarming to many agencies and many levels of uh, bureaucracy, from the feds down to the state. Though the grants totaled only about $65,000, a shoestring budget, most would agree, for a project of this magnitude. Funding that was quickly exhausted on dozens of research dives to track the sea star wasting disease. Ramondi has assembled small teams of his top recently graduated marine science students to collect data up and down the west coast. CCTV spent a week with one team diving various locations around Puget Sound in the state of Washington. Young college graduates earning little pay in exchange for the chance to help discover the cause of this massive die-off. Among these young divers, Tristan McHugh. Like we've seen them twist, fall apart, and then now we see them completely gone. Corey Hume. Didn't look like they were doing too good. And Colin Gaylord. Seeing entire species sort of disappear and Sarah Sampson, whose own research on sea star wasting syndrome began as her college thesis project. And we slowly started seeing all these stars just wasting away, and by the end of the, our project, we had some species that weren't even present at all. Though in a rather rare case on this day, this healthy sunflower star is brought to the surface by a this local marine scientist star. guiding Sarah and the team, Professor Did Benjamin Miner of Western Washington University. So this is the sunflower star. Miner says it's at sites like these south of Seattle, where sunflower stars once flourished, that help provide clues to their deaths. The sites that we've been surveying um, recently we've picked because um, divers have, have reported 
the qualitative abundance of sea stars in these areas. What you'd really like to have is, is good numbers of what the population sizes were at sites for um, before the disease has come and impacted the area, and then compare that to kind of what's happened when the disease is moving through and, and then how they recover after the fact. Um, in most cases, we don't have a lot of good pre-disease data. With so much coastline yet to be surveyed and so many unanswered questions remaining about this mysterious death, professional marine scientists are relying more and more on data collected from local amateur divers known as citizen scientists, like Laura James of Seattle. The scientists can only be in so many places at one time. So the scientists need our eyes to refine their data. Laura, in her familiar pink trimmed diving attire, has over the last 20 years become legendary for her marine conservation efforts. From removing industrial batteries dumped illegally in these waters, to videotaping urban pollutants spilling into waterways from huge underwater drainage pipes like this one. And James, not surprisingly, is said to be the first diver in the Seattle area to sound the alarm to marine scientists about sea stars dying off here. Laura encouraging private citizens everywhere to get more involved to help save the species. I'm worried that this isn't going to be isolated just to the west coast of the United States. I'm worried that it's going to happen around the world. Here, we didn't have a baseline. We don't know exactly when it started down here in Puget Sound because it showed up when we noticed. When we were out here diving and all of a sudden, oh my gosh, the starfish are dying. Every person, citizens everywhere, can go out and get these pictures. People don't always realize how much help they can be just by their observations, just by their everyday observations, just by going for a walk out on the beach and recording what they see. It can, I mean, that can make the difference. To prevent the continued disappearance of sea stars, for example, that just last year clung by the hundreds and thousands to pilings like these around Seattle's waterways kind of to give you an idea of, of what it's like to go visit these pilings now. They're barren. They're completely stripped of almost all life that normally was on them. All the sea stars, all the colors, the rainbow of colors is just gone. It would be a lot like if you regularly went out to a field and saw a multitude of geese that you're used to seeing. They fly up, these big flocks of geese. All of a sudden you go out to that same field and there's nothing and it's silent, it's quiet. We took the starfish for granted. We swam over them every day. And so there's something that we, we just take for granted and we can't do that. Society seemingly turning a blind eye to this mysterious illness impacting sea stars, in her opinion, she says, is no different than ignoring the illness of a family member at home. Laura's own father, Larry Jacobs, is confined to his apartment much of the time these days with asthma, running a HEPA filter in his living room for air filtration, relying on Laura to do his shopping for him once a week. Shopping for dad? Shopping for dad. Laura, you might say, his sea star in his food chain, though his nickname for Laura is Puffer, after a puffer fish. Laura's dad is a retired psychiatrist who says the mindset of most people in today's busy world may often preclude them from noticing an event as serious as a marine species like sea stars wasting away in the waters around their communities. He says even he wasn't so tuned into the problem until Laura showed him images of sea stars she took with her underwater video camera. Then it all clicks. The crucial thing is seeing. Seeing the stick is sick and falling apart starfish uh, was an enormous leap forward in understanding the problem. Perhaps people will become more actively involved like Laura, he says, when they see more of these disturbing images on the news. Everyone, down, even without a lot of education, um, once that curiosity is triggered, it's almost a universal response. There's not a lot of research on starfish and how they grow in the wild. 
When other citizens like Laura now see a sick starfish, they can easily pass on the information to Laura through a simple website she's set up, complete with a map to indicate where sick starfish are being spotted in her area. We set up this website called Sick Starfish, and the idea of it is that you take Instagram, and when you go for a beach walk, you take a picture of that starfish you find on the seashore. And then you hashtag Sick Starfish. I'm not expecting everybody to know whether a sea star is sick or healthy or halfway in between. What we need is a baseline. We need people around the world to go out and capture these pictures of these sea stars so that we know where this impacts next. This information is then passed on for analysis to marine biologists like Dr. Pete Ramondi at UC Santa Cruz. One of the things that's really remarkable about this particular event is that it is probably the most well-documented marine disease that we've ever had. And in large part, that is due to the collaboration between you know, regular scientists and citizen scientists. People like Laura James, people like, we get reports all the time from Oregon, from Southern California, from Alaska, we get reports all the time and they're very, very useful to us. That said, Ramondi says there is still no definitive reason to explain why sea stars are dying. This present case of sea star wasting syndrome far more mysterious than similar cases witnessed in the past, going back to the 1970s, when Ramondi himself, as a young college student, did his thesis work on sea star wasting syndrome in Mexico's Gulf of California that was blamed back then on El Nino and warmer water temperatures. There was one in 83, 84 during the El Nino event. There was one in 97, 98 also during an El Nino event. In those cases, there was a warming of the local seawater and there was a progression of the disease as the warmer water moved further up the coast. But this time around, says Ramondi, there's no El Nino event to blame. It's completely different this time. We don't know where it started. We're, one of the reasons why we're mapping all the incidents is to figure out where it started. We think right now that the initiation point or points were either up in the Northwest, Vancouver, Seattle area, and perhaps maybe in Monterey Bay and Southern California independently. But certainly the earliest instances of this were sort of in the Northwest. And if sea stars here are not dying from a local disease, could it possibly be some sort of exotic disease that somehow arrived to the U.S. West Coast, for example, aboard a foreign vessel? So if, we, if, it's, an, if it's an exotic species that has moved here through some sort of means that we had not envisioned, two things are very concerning. One is we don't know what the consequences will be because the, this is a brand new um, disease that has come into the system. We don't know what the, how these things will respond to them over the long haul. The second is it probably is the beginning of a sequence of other types of like introductions that may affect other species. Dr. Ramondi referring to a deadly domino effect that would have far more serious implications across the sea, particularly when it comes to fish in these waters that play an important role in the world's food supply. That's what really concerns me. The question at hand is, can the spread of sea star wasting syndrome be stopped sooner rather than later? Before it becomes much more serious, Ramondi says, than it already is. Our thanks to Mike Kirsch for that report. Although research funding came quickly, it wasn't nearly enough for an investigation of this magnitude. Bridging the funding gap is one of the most remarkable mobilizations of marine scientists and amateur citizen scientists in recent history. It is an urgent attempt to solve this deadly mystery. Coming up. A result in the elections in Colombia that could fast track to the peace process that there were a lot of people on the left that really believe in these peace talks, and the vote came down to a referendum on the peace talks. America's Next.